Oh, oh, knee pain, oh. Yo, what's good? Today I'm gonna teach you how to get rid of your knee pain when jumping. Let's go. Yeah, we winning by a landslide. Never see me coming on my landmine. Yo, what's good guys? It's Coach Steve here with I Love Basketball TV. If you're new here, we do new videos every single week. Ball handling, shooting, dunk life. So if you're into the dunking, that's what I'm about. Hit that notification button, because if not, you're gonna get dunked on. Yo, so today I'm gonna teach you one trick to actually jump that removes knee pain. I'm gonna show you that at the end of the video, and I'm gonna start with what's happening with the tendon and why you have pain to begin with. So, first things first, I had jumper's knee, chronic, I couldn't even walk without pain for two years straight and now it feels like it's stronger than ever and I could jump off one foot, zero pain on concrete. So I want to tell you about the common issues with jumper's knee so when you do these exercises you can heal them yourself and you can do them properly. So for example, the first thing that I noticed with tendinopathy is when you're jumping, that tendon has to react and grow just like muscles do. When you bend, that's causing tension. The more speed you're having causes more tension, just like a muscle. If you were doing it really fast or if you were doing it with heavier weight, it's gonna cause more tension. Now with the knee tendon or any tendon, they take longer to adapt than muscles. So a lot of times when we squat more or we jump a lot, we build these muscles, but then the tendons can't handle the same force that the muscles are producing, so we continue jumping with more force from our muscles, but it puts too much strain on our tendons. So if you can understand that when you do these exercises, you can do them at a correct pace, so that way you're increasing the tendon strength and the muscle at the same time, so that way you can slowly build that tendon so it's super strong and it can handle that jumping and you can jump pain-free. All right, so let's start working backwards so we could figure out where that knee pain's coming from and start fixing it. So if you have pain jumping off one foot, maybe don't do that. And maybe jump off two feet, which is a hint for the end of this video. And if you have pain jumping off two feet, don't do that. So we're working backwards. Now how bad is it? Is it hurt when you just stand here and you just feel it throbbing? Then you really have to rest a lot. Does it hurt when you walk? Does it hurt with a bend a range of motion? Slowly like this. If it hurts in a full squat, can you do a partial squat right here? Where does the pain end? And if you have chronic pain that hurts in all those ranges of motions, we're just gonna rest. So after you rest it and the pain subsides a little, we're gonna start with isometrics and that's where we're gonna begin today. And we're gonna start super, super small. And it's gonna seem like nothing, but over time it will grow. So one of the first isometrics you can do with no equipment is simply just partially bending like this. This is a little bit of tension in that knee tendon and slowly you can work up to one leg, you can slowly work up to more range, but we're just gonna sit here and hold and the very first thing you can do is slight bend. If you don't feel any pain, that's great. If you feel a little bit, you don't wanna push through too much pain, just a little tiny bit of pain, just so you know that it's stimulated. If not, you can do even slighter of a knee bend. Hold for 45 seconds to a minute and hold that. And you can do three sets one day and that is it. So that motion I was doing holding it like this is called an isometric when you're just holding tension. It's stimulating blood flow, it's strengthening, but we're starting from such ground levels that's why it feels like very little. Another way to, oh, another way to do an isometric is holding your leg like this, but it's a little tougher if you don't have equipment because you don't know how much force you're putting here, but that's where I want you to get to know your body. You should feel stimulation in your knee, but you don't want to feel pain. So this is another isometric you can hold. And slowly as we work up, I want you to slowly just Hold in isometrics like this, that's why wall sits are great, and you slowly work up these isometrics more frequent throughout the day and holding with more range of motion, and that will be one way to be very gradual with your progression of your knee tendon. So the next progression that I love to help strengthen that knee is landings. This chair is not that stable, but look, when you land, boom, you're just absorbing. Now the thing about that, what I love, is it's adding some force, but you're not, you have a very strict uh, area that you're stepping off from. For example, say this is about 12 to 18 inches. I know because of dunk life and I know inches very well. But when you step, step off this landing, I'm stepping off the same height every time and you're absorbing that. So when you go for a jump, you're jumping in the air, that force is very variable. It's going to be really hard to really uh, do the same exact force every time you jump. But landings, this is a high chair. You could step off a platform that's a couple inches and just land. And if it's no pain, very little pain, slowly progress. And what I want you to do is just do a couple reps, six to eight reps one day, again with the isometrics, and that's how small I want you to start. So once you start building up your landings, then we're working way to jumping. So we're doing just isometrics, just very small landings, and this is where I want you to start. 
One more thing with the landings is I still do them to this day so they can continue to strengthen. And as you're building up your knee, you get to a place where you're getting higher than you jump. So say I jump about 40, 42 inches in the air, I can step off a box that's 50 inches. Because when you jump 42 inches in the air, you have to land from 42 inches in the air, and that's another force. So if you can land from higher than that, controlled with no pain, you can really get a good estimate that you can handle that force jumping as well. So you can slowly increase your landings with a measurable device meaning a landing that you can measure how high it is and not a variable and that's a really big key to fix this knee pain because if you're able to keep measuring every step of the way knowing what your knee can handle you can understand that it's getting stronger and you know that you're not going to overload it which is always the cause of knee pain not always but you know a big majority of it all right guys so another great one you can do for your knee pain as it's making progress is step up so you just step on a platform like this, no weight, this one's a little tough because it's made for balancing, but you put your leg, you put your other heel down to the floor and you see a slight bend and come up. So you're using this one. But again, you wanna come forward with it and the higher the platform, the better. And again, if you can measure how high it is and keep it a standard, keep it a consistent every time you do the workouts and slowly add some weight, you can do this range and get super strong in this range. So you add some weight and get super strong in this range. And then you can make a box that's higher and get stronger in that range, okay? So understanding that the range you're going plus the weight are gonna be the two factors in getting that knee strong, but go super slow. I can't emphasize that enough. So with these step ups, you're gonna to wanna to do a lot of reps, but not, not through pain. But for example, that if it's really easy for you, but you don't feel pain, but you've had jumper's knee, you can't jump without pain, I would do 20 reps of these in one set and do three sets in one day. But I want you to see, you'll feel a lot of burning. And that burning is just getting that stimulation, that blood flow, and that is strengthening that tendon. Because you're using it right now. Even though it's a small thing, it's a small movement, you're getting a lot of work in that tendon. And we have to slowly build it up from the partial range of motion to the full range of motion. Just a side note, this stretch, the rectus femoris of your quad, is a big contributing factor to knee pain. A lot of your muscles are as well, by the way. So if you have flexible ankles, flexible hamstrings, that's gonna help with the knee pain as well. So if you're very tight, I really highly suggest stretching. But try this stretch, because this might be the key to your knee pain right away. If you feel instant relief from this, that's a good sign that your rectus femoris is tight. So you're gonna have your knee down. By the way, grab yourself a pad so your knee doesn't have to hit the floor. Again, you wanna avoid that as well if you have jumper's knee, because anything is gonna make it worse. You're gonna have in a lunge position and then slowly just bring this leg up. I'm not that flexible, but try to go like this. And, and when you keep your hips forward, you see the difference? You wanna flex your butt and hip, keep your hips forward. Don't try to extend too much, but just push your hips forward. Oop, oh, oh, I'm falling, I'm falling. All right, here we go. So you lean forwards, push those hips forwards and try to look up a little bit and pull this foot to your butt. To your butt and you should feel it really up here in this quad. And there's a deep muscle called the rectus femoris. We, the normal quad stretch hits the main muscle of our quad, but it's harder to hit that smaller muscle. That's why we have to hit, push the hips forwards. Now this stretch would instantly relieve my knee pain, and that's a good sign that you should continue to do that stretch. It's basically missing blood flow, so because we're not in that position often, it's hard to get into that position. We need a very specific movement. So try that stretch out. If there is instant relief, do that stretch often, get some blood flow, and these isometrics and these workouts and these slow progressions are really gonna strengthen that tendon for you, and that's gonna be your fix. So lastly, we have the advanced version. If you're not pain-free, you wanna slowly work up to these, but this is the level you wanna to get to. It is the sissy squat. It's fantastic. I'm sure you've seen it popularized on Instagram and different platforms, but basically what you wanna do, pad is very important for your knees because you can drop. So you really wanna pad some kind of cushion and you're gonna to wanna to just slowly fall back like this. But again, you don't want this to be like this, okay? You want your butt tight, tucked, and your core tight. So your butt tight, so when you feel like flex, and your core flex, that's what that means. I like to keep my arms out like this for balance and slowly come down. Some of you may feel pain already. And then on the way up, keep that butt tight, okay? Wasn't the best rep, but pretty good. I have zero knee pain with that. Some of you may start to have nothing here, and then when you get lower, you feel the pain. So go to where you feel the pain. Don't go through pain, but you can just go like this and back up, right? But again, the goal is to go all the way down. So this is full range, and then you can start to add weight. So start with just working on the range. If you can't go full range without pain, start in half ranges, and again, 20 or so reps. Really think about pumping, pumping, pumping blood flow. That's how tendons get strong. That's how you're gonna really build up that strength. So do those sissy squats. Again, this is advanced. Don't go through that 
uh, any pain. And this is hitting that full range of the knee tendon because you're really, really pushing. I feel it in my quads and you come up. Okay, it's a beautiful thing and you can do them once, like for me, after I dunk, I can do those after I've already put my body through a lot of jumping and my knee tendons through a lot of stimulus, I could do that after to strengthen them even more. But it's about finding that balance of getting them stronger without overloading them. And once you learn that about yourself, you're gonna be limitless. By the way, guys, highly recommend this pad. I think it's about 25 bucks on Amazon. You can get it in the link below. It's really great if you're working out from home a lot. I use it so much when I did my knee pain because it's great to put my knee on when I'm stretching. It's great for the sissy squats. It's great for balance and stability for my ankles and different things. So use it all the time. Really helpful. Get one if you need. Invest in yourself. It's not that expensive. It could do a lot. Let's go. And finally, how do we jump to avoid pain? And this is something I learned with myself that's really helpful and I want you guys to learn it too. So for me, I'm a two foot jumper and a lot of that became because my one foot hurt off my knee. Meaning I hurt when I jumped off one foot because I was a shorter dunker with more muscle. I'm pushing off so much force off one leg. All that force is going to be really tough on that knee tendon. Now I can jump off concrete without any pain and that is a shock to me. It's a very big disparity because I used to not be able to walk without knee pain. So what I want you to notice is if you're jumping off your left leg and that causes knee pain off one leg maybe try jumping right left because when you jump right left which is this this knee is going to take all the pressure and again that's something i learned the wrong way but if you look this leg is even more developed than this one because i've done so much right left jumping dominantly on this leg so if you have left knee pain from jumping off one foot because a lot of you are a righty a lot of you guys are righties and you're jumping off left leg for layups and dunks if you can jump right left you may lay off that knee a little bit as it's healing. So you can practice your right left jumping without doing it. Again, if it has pain, you're going to want to avoid it. But sometimes I've noticed with myself, I can't jump off my left leg alone because it feels pain. But if I jump right left, I don't even feel that pain for two reasons. I'm not jumping all off my left leg. And the second one is most of that force is getting into this right leg, which is more developed and stronger. So give that a shot. And another big trick with your jumping is when you're trying to build up your knees to be strong as they possibly can you have to be balanced so even though i'm not a left right jumper and i wasn't jumping that great i would still do some jumps off that to make my left leg dominant and same with my right leg imagine trying to jump off right leg single leg it's super difficult but if you can do that and make progress and make sure to remember to jump off both plants not only are you going to avoid knee pain because you're going to be balanced you're not going to be doing 20 jumps off right left you're going to do 10 and 10 it's going to be less stimulus on the dominant leg but you're also going to build balance and you're also going to build skill you want to be able to jump every way you don't want to be stuck to one pattern and that's going to be a great way for you to elevate your game and also keep your knees healthy and keep them super strong so you can keep making progress all right guys that's it for today's video again remember a couple months of rehab and prehab to strengthen your knees so it can be limitless is way more worth it than trying to jump through pain and having chronic knee pain and then eventually not being able to make progress so stay patient be diligent with your workouts leave any comments you have any questions you have about your knee pain journey i'd love to help you out and i'll see you next week <laughs>